Our minds are still racing back and forth, longing for a return to normality, trying to stitch our future to our past and refusing to acknowledge the rupture. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a getaway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can walk through lightly with a little luggage ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. So this, is, this was a quotation from um, the activist and um, uh, writer Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy is uh, from India. And uh, what I thought uh, very uh, relevant and why I chose, why I chose to, um, to uh, begin um, uh, today's uh, talk about uh, writing, I chose her because she talks uh, about this uh, rapture and about uh, what means this return to normality. And um, I guess um, uh, we as writer, uh, as people who uh, work with uh, ideas and words, uh, should try to um, think deeply about this kind of uh, normality we long for and what would mean uh, to, uh, to break it and to imagine new forms of writing and what these new forms could be, would be in a time, let's call it of grief and loss that we integrated and that we would like to, um, um, to go through. Uh, so um, my, um, my masterclass, let's call it my talk, my, my uh, intervention uh, would be about autobiography and performance uh, about how we integrate uh, biography and autobiographic elements in the writing and how this integration could bring about a new form of writing and what would mean in fact to, uh, to imagine spaces of creation and of writing that uh, are, let's call them proper or trying to be proper for our times. Because I, I really believe that this rapture that Arundhati Roy talks about, that this um, uh, portal um, that she, uh, she talks about should also make us think about new ways of writing, what we preserve, uh, and what we leave behind us, trying to imagine these spaces of creativity and these spaces of uh, new writing. Uh, I chose autobiography because I think it's a time when um, not the return to normality, but the return to um, the skin of our writing, the return to um, uh, those deep uh, feelings, those deep emotions that we, uh, we, uh, we are going through could in a way help us um, imagine these new forms and these new waves of um, recreating playwriting and re-infusing it with a sense of, uh, let's call it, uh, uh, more emotional perspectives. So, um, my, uh, uh, my questions uh, are what kind of dramaturgy are we conceiving after this rupture? Uh, how are we creating spaces of fluid imagination to push the limits of our daily realities? What are those deep, shady and shining illuminating corners that can give us, us the possibility to open the intimacy and reflect on it. I guess in our, in our um, creative practices, in our theater practices, 
we should or uh, we uh, it would be maybe better to to reconnect to uh, the language of intimacy to uh, the language of the perme permeability of this intimacy what would mean and how we could bring about uh, very deep emotions uh, to uh, to this new audiences we are imagining together. Uh, so I tried to, um, uh, to um, uh, consider different aspects regarding autobiographical dramaturgy. What is its role? What could it bring to, to these new forms of writing? And one of the basic uh, uh, elements it could bring about is to expand the spectrum of narrative. And I think it is, it is extremely important to expand the spectrum of narratives because expanding it could bring more narratives in focus and could, in a way, recreate spaces for different kinds of narratives, for marginal narratives, uh, for the narratives of those who, are not, who do not appear always uh, on the scene, who are not considered as, let's call them, mainstream narratives. So expanding the spectrum of narratives, I guess for me, is a um, mainly political response that theater can offer, giving, in fact, the possibility to extend the scene to what I called marginalized stories, to what I called stories that we do not hear all the time, stories that we do not um, represent all the times. Um, and in this respect, I would call uh, the Yerdri Hedon. I also brought her book, which I consider extremely important, Autobiography and Performance. Um, and in the first chapter of her book, she says about autobiography and performance that to reveal invisible lives, to resist marginalization and objectification, and to become speaking subjects with self-agency would be one of the main goals of autobiographical writing. So how in this very uh, uh, problematic times we could, we could reveal what uh, the Idri Hayden calls invisible lives, um, resist marginalization and objectification, and create these spaces that expand the so-called known narratives. And I think uh, um, in these times also, we, we talked a lot about uh, um, social distance. We talked about, uh, um, I don't know, um, having uh, putting masks on our faces to protect ourselves. But there were these, were, these were, let's call them the mainstream narratives. But what are the narratives and what are the stories of those who could not go into these mainstream narratives of those who could not, let's say, protect, who could not isolate, who could have, who had to work every single day. So if we are to adapt a little bit our, uh, 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 our narratives, I, I think this expands, this uh, expandation uh, of the spectrum of narratives could give more flexibility and could give more uh, fluidity to a theater that is to reform itself and to find new ways, in fact, to, to discover the narratives that lack. And uh, I would make a, 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 um, um, a reflection um, regarding the spectrum of narratives uh, to uh, um, um, a performance, um, a Romanian performance. I declare on my own responsibility. It's a performance uh, uh, written and uh, performed by a, a Roma actress. Um, 
Alina Sherban, who uh, worked uh, together with uh, David Schwartz, uh, director, Monica Marinescu, playwright and dramaturg, uh, Catalin Rulea, musician. Uh, and it's a performance uh, that uh, extends a lot uh, this spectrum of narratives. Uh, it talks about uh, um, a girl who uh, uh, lives uh, um, in a Roma uh, medium, who, who is always confronted with a lot of marginalization, and who tries to, to find uh, 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 the power to talk about all these things and the power to transgress them. Uh, it is one of the things that, uh, in her book, the Idre um, Hedden uh, emphasized, the actor as agent, no longer a victim, but a transformative survivor. So the actor and the narrative as places to transform and to be voices of marginalized categories who are now uh, who do not uh, uh, find, let's say, uh, um, their spaces, their ways of representing their sense in theater. So what is relevant in this performance is that through uh, autobiographic writing, talking about how it is to be uh, a child in a Roma community, how it is to be ashamed of the way you are dressed when you go to school, uh, what is your relation to your family, uh, what is your relation to the children you are playing with, uh, how you prefer sometimes to be invisible, invisible because you are too ashamed to expose themselves yourself so through this autobiographic writing we extend in fact a lot the spectrum of narratives and we create spaces also for new social and political narratives for new social and political stories because we give them a place we make room for these voices who are not heard. And creating a room for them is also creating, in fact, a new dramaturgy, a dramaturgy that is, uh, uh, um, that no longer is, how to say, uh, silenced, that is no longer uh, marginalized, that becomes a voice. Um, and I think it's important because as another uh, very interesting uh, Nigerian uh, feminist writer uh, um, uh, said, Chimamanda Ngozi Adikie, uh, sometimes we live the danger of a single story, meaning that sometimes we, we, uh, we represent the stories that we already know. We represent the place and the characters and the narratives that we have already tested. And I think we as playwrights, as authors, um, we are always in search of these new narratives and of this expanding of the narratives. And in a way, it's very, it's very important if these narratives are created, are said, are represented by those who, um, who are very related to their intimate core. Uh, that's why I quoted this performance. And of course, uh, uh, there are uh, um, uh, Roma actresses, uh, together with uh, Alina Sherban is also uh, Mihaela Dragan, who are talking more and more about uh, um, um, their experiences, uh, their stories, and their personal way of reflecting on them. Because uh, the danger of, one's, of, of a single story is the danger of closing the theater, is the danger of um, um, not imagining, as I said, spaces for other narratives. And uh, the autobiography, uh, the autobiographic dramaturgy can bring this reflection on intimate subject. And it's very important when we can, when we can have them, because we can talk a lot about 
writing new stories and approaching new social and political perspective. Um, another interesting thing that, uh, and relevant thing that autobiography brings about um, is uh, um, to make the personal political, and this was one of the one of the goals of the um, autobiographic uh, dramaturgy since the 70s. Uh, how how uh, we can make uh, uh, personal issues political, and I think for a playwright this is very important because um, uh, we try always to think about how a single event, how a detail, how a personal detail, how a personal insight can transcend, can go beyond this very intimate uh, um, sphere and can bring more political insights, can become uh, relevant in a broader sense. It's our way of, uh, how to say, thinking about these uh, uh, personal details, about this autobiographic uh, um, um, things that really represent in, and created something in you, in, in us, and how we can we can transcend them, how we can give them a more relevant, uh, um, let's say, um, importance, um, because. Uh, we are always right with the potential in our mind. How, through a personal story, we can make also others, audiences, uh, uh, people who read our stories, how we can make them conscious of their own of their own of their own autobiographic elements how they can reflect on them how they can be let's say more um, um, imaginative in giving them a personal input so uh, beginning with personal details i think it's extremely important and can um, make the emotional we are writing about, let's say, um, uh, relevant for a lot of other categories, can bring about this uh, uh, emotionality, this intimacy, what is really uh, relevant for each of us. Um, and I will, uh, I will uh, quote again uh, Deirdre Hedden um, and the performer she talks about in her book, Tammy Spry, who says that performative autobiography is a site of narrative authority offering me the power to reclaim and rename my voice and body privately and in rehearsal, and then publicly. So I think it's this uh, uh, process that enables me to speak the personally political in public. So to begin with uh, a personal experience, with something that uh, um, is a limit experience that created, again, uh, a, a rupture, something uh, very important, and to try to make it relevant also for the others, to try to, to find in it uh, 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 relevant aspects also for the others. I think it's important because these uh, 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 personal issues are more and more, uh, um, how to say, present in contemporary playwriting. And it's our thought, it's our imagination how to make them broader, how to make them political. 
and I will uh, um, I will call again uh, um, some performances. Uh, I will call again a performance which is called uh, the 90s, um, a period, a uh, very interesting period in Romanian uh, history because it talks about uh, uh, transformation after the the revolution in Romania after the 1989 revolution. So there is this. Uh, performance, the 90s, which was created by a group of, um, uh, written and created by a group of uh, actors together with uh, director uh, David Schwarz. The actors are um, Katia Pascariu, Alice Monica Marinescu, uh, Andrei Sherban, uh, Alex uh, Fifa, and Alexandru Potocan. And they thought about creating this performance about what representing what represented for them and for their family this period, the 90s, how it was conceived, how changed uh, uh, the fact, the histories of our families how uh, their mothers uh, went, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, went abroad and had to work there, and what brought to them this experience. How was the transformation from a socialist time to a, a chaotic uh, capitalism? What meant for them this transformation, for them as children and also for them as adults. And what I think is relevant in this performance is the way that succeeds to make the personal, political, in a writing about uh, very intimate details. Uh, for instance, the performance uh, um, uh, opens with a scene uh, of, um, of a boy who waits for, who is waiting for her mother for his mother who is in the streets in December 1989. And it's this child, this boy waiting for his mother to come back and not knowing if his mother will come back or not. So there are glimpses of uh, personal, of personal experiences that, uh, um, that uh, uh, begin to have a very important political relevance because they talk about what is intimate, but through, through understanding and analyzing intimacy, they talk about what the 90s signified, represented for a whole country, and not only for Romania, but also for countries with similar history. So, through let's call let's call it a, a, a very a, a little door that opens into the uh, into the histories of this uh, uh, of the of those who are represented in the show. We have the possibility to investigate a writing which becomes political, and which makes another thing which I think is very important. It we, because we talk also in autobiography writing about identification, how a very personal experience can open up a whole field of identification and how we can say, yes, me and my family also have this history. We also were witness of these events. We also lived these events. How did we live? How we could, um, how, I, I don't know, how we could uh, uh, cope with this transformation. So to make the personal political is a very, um, is a very challenging goal uh, because uh, I guess through very intimate, through very detailed uh, uh, glimpses of writing, we can open up and we can talk about very uh, important political events and how these events affected us emotionally. It's like, uh, I don't know, uh, um, uh, illuminating a single emotion and trying to, uh, to, bring, in, to bring it uh, uh, um, uh, in a public context. Um, 
Another thing that, uh, uh, another performance that I would like to talk about is, um, in fact, uh, um, two performances, uh, because the, the two of them are talking about and are, uh, are um, exploring autobiographic dramaturgy in different ways. Uh, one is uh, Tulips, Tulips, and is created by, uh, by um, uh, Bogdan Georgescu and a collective of, uh, of actors, and it talks about queerness, what it, what it is to be queer, uh, what it is to have uh, relations who are not, uh, let's call them, I don't know, heteronormative, who are not uh, um, uh, in a box that confirms a lot of stereotypes. And what the performance uh, does uh, uh, extremely intelligently, uh, it works, of course, with, performer, with performers that reveals their stories, but without saying a word. La lele, la lele, bruma se le mele, la lele, che tindre c'è, a c'è se plò, perché con le multe culò. La lele, la lele, se ua se le mele, la lele, e i borbì, lo colmeo, ci spune c'è a tre a se spune. La lele, la lele, Iar roșu plecărat, ce cure vi l-au dat, În clipa când m-au spertat. La lele, la lele, Rumoase ca pistele mele, Suntem uniți și fericiți, La lele, la lele, floriți, La lele, la lele, So it's more, it's a dramaturgy of the performance in the way it is created and in the way the stories, without saying any word, are linked one to another. We see, for instance, a performance um, um, which reveals uh, something about her trans experience, but this experience uh, uh, is is written, so is not performed, is not said. We see it written. We see performances, uh, performers who uh, um, get very close to us, trying to to get in contact with us, but without saying anything. So, it's not a text, it's not a written script, but it's of course uh, an autobiographic. Um, direction of conceiving dramaturgy, because the dramaturgy cannot uh, sometimes is not only uh, is not only uh, connected to words, but is connected to a way we organize the material, the performative material. And the other performer, performance that I want to talk about uh, is uh, not wrong. Um, Negreshita is in Romania. Uh, it talks also about uh, um, how, to, how, how to discover uh, um, uh, queerness uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, when you are uh, um, 
teenager, uh, how it is to uh, to um, to be raised, let's say, in a very uh, in a very normative uh, uh, medium, and how you transgress all the cliches you are talked about. What I think this performance succeeds is talking, in fact, about safety. Because through queerness, through talking about discovering one's ideas, discovering who you are, discovering uh, your, uh, your desires of expressing your activities and your identity, and also uh, sometimes the need to repress your identity, it talks about safety. How you can be safety as a body, as a queer body, uh, in a place, how you can uh, how you can long for this safety? Uh, why do we, do you need your safety? And what I think is very interesting in this performance is that opens a broader it opens a broader field of questions that are in a ways that are in a way emphasized through queerness, but transgress also queerness, talking about body safety, about uh, uh, how you can uh, move more freely, how you can express your emotions uh, uh, without being afraid that um, they will be censored, that you will be uh, uh, punished if you express yourself. So um, it's the need to talk about autobiographic uh, autobiographic experiences but framing them in a more broader uh, from a more broader perspective um, another aspect that autobiographic dramaturgy brings about is uh, the illuminating self and its universal forces so how uh, digging into one's experience, into one's personal uh, uh, biographic uh, um, transformation can, can reveal, can bring about this universal uh, uh, representativeness, how your own story through it's a uh, 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 very, uh, very, uh, let's call them uh, deep details, uh, can be universal, can be representative to, to many other things. How, because it brings about things and details and experience that others can relate to. Um, and uh, uh, I will quote again uh, uh, the book and uh, uh, the performer uh, Lisa Kahn, uh, who says that the goal of autobiographical work is to use the details of your own life to illuminate or explore something more universal. So coming and working with this very, working dramaturgically uh, with this very sensitive issues, with your uh, emotions, with your uh, fears, with your anguishes, with your limit experiences can be extremely valuable because it brings about a more universal response. Uh, and, in, and in this, I, I guess um, um, there, uh, uh, there is important uh, uh, a quotation that I, find, uh, I found in uh, Rebecca Solnit. Rebecca Solnit is also a writer, uh, an activist, who talks a lot about uh, um, stories and about uh, autobiography and about uh, how uh, uh, um, some very violent experience, experiences, some very deep emotions, uh, some very torturing uh, even uh, desires can be transformed into writing and can have a relevance if they are transformed into writing and if they are pushed in order to be a dramaturgical material. Rebecca Solnit says, stories save our lives. 
We are our stories, stories that can be both our prisons and the axes which break the gates of these prisons. Liberation is always a storytelling process. I guess this is very beautiful and also uh, empowering because it talks about uh, how a story, in, the, in our case, how a dramaturgical material that brings about autobiographic details can be liberating for the one who writes, but not only, for the others, for those who are listening to it, for those who are uh, seeing, watching the performance, because, as I said, they can identify, and through identification, they can explore this feeling of liberation, this feeling of uh, reconsidering them themselves, of, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of repositioning oneself. And uh, Rebecca Solnit, in her books, uh, in her book calls, uh, quotes, uh, um, Audre Lorde, a beautiful poem, uh, poet who says, my silences, I regretted them the most. And these are so many that have to be destroyed, relating also uh, some violent experience that sometimes uh, uh, we tend to, uh, to silence. But if we have the courage to talk about them, they might bring about liberation and illumination. And uh, um, finishing, uh, I will just try to, to, to make a very brief uh, reference to, the, to, to one of the projects I've have, I have been involved in. It's a project called uh, uh, Fourth Age, uh, in which I'm involved with, uh, uh, with other artists. Uh, and uh, we, are, we have been working since uh, 10 years in a residence home. And we have been working with people aging from uh, 50 to 100 years, uh, making performances with them and uh, trying, in a way, to, um, to uh, bring about uh, autobiographic details from their lives. So we made a lot of workshops with them, um, talking about different aspects in, in their lives, talking about uh, the way they felt uh, most afraid and the way they felt most liberated, talking about uh, deep experiences and traumatic experiences in a way of, um, uh, how to say, um, paying back uh, a theater of way of uh, a way of reconciliation with the stories which are not told stories that can be very very relevant because they can as I said, broaden the spectrum of our um, uh, narratives. Um, so all these stories that I was, uh, I, I witnessed along uh, 10 years, uh, really emphasized me uh, the need to uh, to look for uh, uh, liberation through writing and to uh, look for, uh, uh, um, uh, how to say, those silences that can be destroyed through writing. Mm -hmm.